A dispute over fairness in school sports. Parent advocate Nicole Neely will tell us about a new policy pushing for more transgender athletes to compete in girls' sports. While many states are moving to ban transgender athletes from participating in girls' sports, President Biden has proposed new protocols to strengthen the ability of transgender athletes to compete in the sport. Joining me right now to discuss just what these protections mean for Title IX women's sports is Parents Defending Education President Nicole Neely. Welcome back to the National Desk. Thank you. Now, this is one of the challenges that you said would likely be coming. Tell me more about the proposal on the table to expand the definition of Title IX to include gender identity rather than the sex of the athletes. And would a state still be able to make their own law overriding, overriding this? Uh, sure. So on Thursday, the Department of Education released their draft rules. They'll probably be releasing the official rules later this week um, and opening comments up on the Federal Register that would, as you said, expand the definition of sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity. And so it would then preempt the uh, re regulations specifically out that um, this would supersede state laws. And so, no, states would not be allowed to determine whether transgender athletes could or could not compete, which is certainly going to be an issue because as of today, 18 states actually have bans on such activity taking place. And so we are setting the stage for a major showdown between the federal government and state governments. When you talk about the federal government, is this something that the president can do unilaterally? Does he need uh, Congress to act on this or vote on this to make this happen? Um, in our but in our interview, yes, he needs Congress to make it happen. Um, it is up to the courts to interpret the statute as it was written. And when Title IX was ratified in 1972, the, defini the definition of sex was just that, sex. Um, and so reading in by uh, the sexual orientation and gender identity should be done by an act of Congress and cannot be done by a pen and a phone. Now, these new protocols are not limited to the athletic field. The language, as it is written, states in part, quote, protect LGBTQI plus students from discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and sex characteristics. First, what are sex characteristics and, and what other lawsuits are you expecting will follow based on this definition? Well, it's a great question. I think that's one of the problems is that um, sex characteristics is widely definable. I mean, it could mean one, one thing to me and a different thing to you. And unfortunately, that's really not how federal policymaking is supposed to happen. Um, and so I think, you know, we are going to see an attack on private spaces, on locker rooms, on dorms, on things like that, bathrooms, where students believe that they should, um, you know, be segregated based on sex. There is a reason that Title IX is different than Title VI, because there are significant biological differences between men and women. And so in the sports setting, I think there are major issues of fairness, of safety that have been raised by families. And so it's something that we're tracking very closely because as parents raise the concerns, you know, they're mocked as being bigots, as being transphobes, when they really, they care about their children's safety and they want a little bit of control over how those things are adjudicated. Transgender athlete Leah Thomas at the University of Pennsylvania set a record for women's NCAA swimming here in the U.S., which has put this conversation at the forefront. In fact, I was looking online, many countries right now under mounting pressure to reform their policies after world swimming banned transgender athletes who reached male puberty from elite women's events. Online, there's a lot of questions about competition and fairness in sports. What does this mean for all sports, do you think, moving forward, Nicole? So what this is actually is a tremendous mess because every sporting agency actually decides these issues differently. Um, the NCAA has a sport by sport approach. Um, USA Swimming says that transgender female athletes have to have below five nanomoles per liter of testosterone. Most female swimmers actually have between 0.5 to 2.4 nanomoles. So even a transgender female athlete would have twice the amount of testosterone. Uh, other sports such as lacrosse actually have no reduction in testosterone. And in, in, men's, in men's lacrosse, the average speed of a shot is um, 80 to 95 miles per hour. Compare that to women's lacrosse, where it's the average shot speed is 45 to 65 miles an hour. Those are significant differences. And men athletes actually wear helmets in lacrosse. And so I think we're going to have a lot of conflict, a lot of questions, because this is such a patchwork of regulations. What does your organization plan to do to try and and change or stop these stop these changes from happening first we're trying to raise awareness I think a lot of families have no idea what's going on so we're trying to put this issue on people's radars the next thing is we're trying to help people submit comments there actually is a process for when the federal government wants to rewrite regulations they have to submit or they have to accept and, and receive and take into account comments from the public and so we're gonna have a portal that will encourage people to submit their thoughts their feedback on this process whether they like this whether they dislike it and we'll also be submitting our own formal comments and I suspect um, as we said before that there will be significant litigation 
investigation. And we plan to either be involved in that issue, in that um, in those efforts directly, or by submitting briefs to the courts. All right, Nicole Neely, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks.